This is the Moving Company's first show, The Moving Company. We, we move things, but I think we move people first. My name is Dominique Augustin Serrant, and I'm the co-artistic director of The Moving Company. My name is Stephen Epp, and I'm one of the co-artistic directors of The Moving Company. We're not new, but our theater company is. The focus of The Moving Company is in creating new work. It's never existed in front of an audience before. Our mission is larger than just to do plays. What's important is to find the chemistry of a story with a society you live in that has a particular beauty, particular journey. You ain't aiming to have another one, are you? Did, did, did you know it was going to be? What? How it happen to you? What you don't you don't know where they come from? You ain't so thick as all that, now are you? Our first show, Come Hell and High Water, is inspired by William Faulkner's Old Man. It's an oratory of sorts, of dance, music, and text. Those lives were mine to love and cherish, to guard and guide along life's way. Oh, God forbid that one should perish, that one elect should go astray. Of course, we wanted to do a show about Katrina. And when we came across the novella, it felt like a, 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 way, a way in. It's both celebratory and a kind of mourning for what's, what happened, and a kind of awe at the power of forces beyond our control. Come back home someday. And here is us, stuck on a parcel of land in the midst of all that river with nothing to do but live. It was as if we were not the only people as far as the eye could see but the very first people to ever look out upon that constant and undulating horizon. The very first man and woman to ever stand upright and behold of it. It touches uh, racial issues and discrimination, but not in a knock you out kind of way, but in a very poetic way. Who done this to you? And how'd he get away? What are you talking, boy? Look at me. You ain't never done looked at me, have you? Never right straight at me. It ain't sitting in a tree in the middle of the river make me this color. We should do a tear off the paper, the paper and then do a four-dimensional little structure. Oh, like this. We first started to work together in, uh, I believe, 1983. So that's a while ago. We met here in Minneapolis at a pin center for the arts because we were performing on different floors. I was on the second floor and he was on the sixth. That's kind of how we met. We just, as artists, see, saw each other's work and, uh, and uh, we decided we should uh, work together. I love what he does. So should I say I love what he does? <laughs> no, you don't have to say that. <laughs> our, our former company, uh, Theatre de la Jeune Lune, was founded by five uh, artistic directors who met in Paris and then moved here. Steve joined us very early on and we've been partners for, for all these years. We had worked together for over 25 years at, 
at Shenlun, and um, I mean, we we created a bucket full of shows. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't say that. Uh, yes, he can. How should we phrase it? A bucket uh, full of shows is good. <laughs> We did Shakespeare, we did Moliere, we did operas, we did 19th century novels, we... Lots of creations. We did a lot of comedy that's completely created out of our own, you know, sensibilities and strange uh, problems. And uh, we did big political pieces, we did intimate shows. We did everything we loved. Some really beautiful, beautiful work, work that we're very proud of. There were a few quacks, but not... not <laughs> Pretty grandiose work, I should say, that went around the country. We got tons of awards, including a Tony Award. So we're both Tony Award winners. And there are waves in, in history, and we've gone through many waves. As members of Jeune Lune, including the down wave, which was uh, profoundly tragic for both of us and the whole community. <laughs> The closing of Shenlun was, was extremely difficult. It wasn't something we chose or wanted to do. It was, uh, became an inevitability in, it, to some degree, it, uh, mostly for financial reasons. The artistic energy was, was quite vibrant. It's uh, strange to be riding the wave from creating this small organization to see it to its extraordinary success, and then to its death, which, which was not my choice, by any means. I was very proud and pleased with what it could become, and, but history is history, and we decided that the legacy should be the artists who've been there to continue and, and find a new form. The past is never dead. It isn't even past. It's just there, same as a river. If Jeanne were to be redone again in some ways, uh, that's what we're doing, in a very new way. Try to give us water. And with this, right. And with a lot of young people, we're really excited about the work. So, so it's great, it's great for us. We have this oxygen and, and we have the experience. Always at the beginning of a story, there's an architecture, a journey and an architecture. And, and that's, of course, a body in a space is part of the architecture. I call it contaminate. We try to contaminate as many artists as possible with that spirit, and, and, and it's beautiful. Okay, good. Let's, let's uh, completely change the beginning. <laughs> we hope to do work that is even better than what we've ever done. And, and to show it nationally and internationally. It feels right. It feels like something was interrupted for a while and now we just continue. So, I'm thankful. If it's incredibly well done, people will come. And you'll regrow an audience. So the question is in our quarters as artists. Are we doing the best we can so we can do the best theatre we, we do? And we're asking that question every day. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.